Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 9, Part 2. Welcome to Part 2. In this part we're going to look at selective pruning. Select pruning is a good technique when you already have a trained neural network, you simply want to improve the performance of it. Selective pruning works by iterating over all of the hidden neurons in a neural network and seeing which ones we can remove. This is something of a trial and error process. We'll actually remove neurons and see what effect it has on the output of the neural network. If the output is still below an acceptable error rate, then we will go ahead and remove that neuron and we will continue looking for another neuron that we can remove. We will begin by looking at how we implement the selective pruning algorithm. Here you see the top part of the selective neural network pruning algorithm. We start, we set n equal to 1, n is equal to the neuron that we are considering removing. We evaluate the neural network without the hidden layer neuron n. Then we make a decision. Is the error rate acceptable? If it is, then we remove neuron n and we start the process over again. Is the error rate not acceptable? We'll continue and we'll move on to the next part of the chart if the error rate is, is not acceptable. This process will continue until all of the neurons have been evaluated. Every time we do actually remove a neuron, we start from the beginning, we reevaluate the first neuron and check the entire process again because we've changed the structure of the neural network by removing one of these neurons we need to reevaluate. We now continue on to the bottom part of the flowchart. You can see the diamond where we left off, error rate acceptable, yes or no. If the error rate is acceptable, then we start over. We follow that yes back up to the part of the flowchart that we already evaluated. If the error rate is not acceptable, then we add 1 to n. We are proceeding on to the next neuron to check to see if it can be removed. We check to see if n is greater than the number of hidden layer neurons. If it's not, we continue onward with processing. And we check if we've reached the end where there are no more neurons to remove, we check to see if we did remove any during the cycle. If we removed a neuron during the cycle, then we've changed the dynamics of the neural network and it makes sense looping through the hidden layer neurons one more time just to see if we can remove yet another neuron. This cycle continues until we've processed the network. Here you see the fine neuron method that is provided by the prune class. This is perhaps the most important method provided by the selective pruning algorithm. What it does is it loops through all of the available hidden neurons and it finds a neuron that can be pruned. It returns a boolean if it did find a neuron that can be pruned. It returns a false value if it did not. This allows the method that calls it to loop until no more neurons can be removed. This was shown in the flowchart that we just looked at. The first thing that it does is it sets up a for loop. It's going to loop from zero up to the number of neurons in the hidden layer. For each layer, it's going to create a trial neural network. This is a neural network that has the particular hidden neuron clipped. We keep the original neural network because we don't know if we really want to remove that neuron it could be very detrimental to the performance of the neural network. But we create this trial neural network and we determine the error for the trial neural network. The trial neural network error is going to go into the E value and we check the value in E against what we've already established is the maximum error that we're willing to tolerate. If the error is below it, then we know that it's acceptable to remove this neuron. All that we have to do to remove the neuron is to set the current network equal to the trial neural network. Since we already removed the neuron in the trial neural network, removing the neuron is simply a matter of keeping the neural network and we return true. Otherwise we continue looping across the other neurons waiting to try to find one hidden neuron that we can remove. If we fail to find any neurons that we can remove from the hidden layer, then we return with false. This will stop the process. 
Here you see the selective pruning example. We're going to use it for the XOR problem. You can see that we've set it up so that you can have the inputs for the XOR. To do this, we're going to begin by training the neural network for the XOR. Here you can see the training progressing. It has now trained and it's complete. It has less than 1% error and we're going to run it. You can see the outputs. It is correctly identifying the XOR data. The actual outs for the middle two are nearly one. The other actual outs are zero. Now we're going to click prune. Notice what happens when you prune. It's going to prune one neuron. It ran through all of the neurons that were in the hidden layers and it determined that it was able to remove one. Now when we run, notice the output was just slightly different. This did not really change the output from the neural network. This was a good prune. We were able to remove one of the hidden layer neurons and not affect the output of the program that substantially. The neural network is now more efficient because it, is, it has one fewer hidden neuron. This concludes part two. As you saw, the selective pruning algorithm is good when you have a neural network that is already set up and trained. You can remove neurons that are not contributing much to the overall solution. But what if you don't know how many hidden neurons you want to have? You can use incremental pruning. You can use the computer to try many possibilities of hidden neuron configurations and see which one performs the best. We hope you will continue with part three. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.